Uh, now, imagine coming home from a stint in the army and being greeted with a sign exposing you for supposedly cheating. Uh, it happened to one army officer who returned to this sign outside the house. What it says there is he lacks moral courage, discipline, loyalty and commitment after his wife uh, discovered an alleged affair. Um, she's gone to a lot of effort mm. to put that banner up there, hasn't she, Janet? Uh, is it yes. a step too far, do you think? Well, I looked at that and I thought, well, um, I had a similar experience happen to me because I, earlier this morning we were talking about this and we were saying, oh, well, you know, has anyone ever cheated on you? And I'm like, well, not to my knowledge, but, but there's a big um, black mark in my romantic history when uh, I started an affair with the boss where I was working and uh, my husband obviously wasn't aware of this and then I said to him I'm afraid uh, this coming weekend I have to go and uh, work away from home and stay the night so oh. the lies were coming thick and fast uh, anyway I went uh, with my lover to um, the New Forest or somewhere, some forest in the West Country. And um, we were in our love nest. <laughs> so knock on the door, Phil, and knock on the front door of this lovely cottage. And my husband was outside. He'd managed to get the address Ooh. and uh, had driven all the way down. And I opened the door and I went, what are you doing here? And he went, I know what you've been up to. Oh God, I'm not Janet. happy about it. I'm pretty disgusted, but if you just get your belongings, get in the car, we'll go back to London, I'll forgive you, and we'll just not discuss it again. It's obviously a bit of madness on your part, so I'm giving you three minutes to get in the car. So I spent the whole three minutes arguing about why couldn't it be five minutes, that oh, was just God, being unreasonable, it? blah, blah, blah. And I went back <laughs> in and I said to my boyfriend, look, I can't believe it, he's driven all the way down, he's given me three minutes, and as I said that, he drove off. Well done, <laughs> well done, husband. Well done, husband. Husband, yeah. husband number one. And um, after he drove off, I felt a bit... Well, I felt bad, actually. And then I thought, well, obviously, I can't go home. So we went back to London and stayed with the boyfriend. And the next day, I went into the office where we both worked, and in reception were all my belongings. <sighs> 40 black plastic bin bags. Oh, my. The big bin bags that, you know... We have the wheelie bins in reception. Whole reception full of my belongings with a label. So, property of Janet Street Porter. <gasps> oh my. Were you mortified? <laughs> mortified? It was in the evening standard by the end of the day. It was shocking. It was so embarrassing. Wow. And then what it did was it forced me to live with that person because, like, the decision had been taken for my own stupidity and whipped the ground from under did my you, feet. Did you learn from that? In the respect of, I'm I'm not going to do that again. No, okay. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> um, because I did, I I had an affair years ago, years and years ago, and um, and there was reasons for it, and I'm not condoning it at all. But the one thing I learnt from it was when I was found out, because everyone's found out at some point. Yes. Doesn't matter yeah. if it takes years, and especially now, God, it's terrible. But everyone gets found out, and I got found out, and. And I admitted it straight away because you can't deny it when the you know the evidence is there. But I remember, because of the pain I saw on that person's face, mm. and it wasn't actually because I didn't love that person. It was because I felt that person didn't love me anymore, and mm. someone else came along that I felt did, and I fell for it. Yeah. And now I go, uh, well, then I was like, I will never, ever, ever do that again. And if I'm ever in that situation again, I will tell the person before it happens but, that I mean, if it's it doesn't change, she, that's going to happen. You cheated because you were unhappy. Yeah. Um, and I think there must be a lot of people who do that. You know, that they can't sit down and have the conversation mm. and say, right, OK, we've got a problem, and so we'll discuss it, etc. Yeah. And so you kind of fall into an affair, and it's the lack of communication that causes that. And even, like, you are saying your husband, when he turned up, he said, get in the car in three minutes and we'll never speak about this again. Mm. Well, well, my third how husband can you not found, speak said that it? too when he found me having an affair. My third husband said... Uh, I don't want to divorce you, I'll forgive you. And I went, no, I'm sorry. I'm I but, I mean, know. unless you speak about it, it's, it's going to happen gonna again, isn't it? No, exactly, it's mm. not going to get any better. I mean, I just think that you, if you're doing something like that, you're embarrassing yourself and embarrassing the person 
and it's really, really hard to come back yeah, from yeah. anything like that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I mean, what if you do? I mean, I think we've got somebody saying it's all right if you think you are going to move out and that is the end of the relationship, but if you are in any way hoping that things are going to get better... Not going to happen. You've kind of completely canned it, haven't you? Um, you never fail to amaze me, Janet. <laughs>